Well, hello. Time to talk about the National History Day. So how this is going to be going. I am currently not in class, as you are probably keenly aware of by now. Uh, if you're not, you really need to pay a little bit more attention, but that is okay. Uh, so all I want you to do right now is pay attention as if I were in the classroom this very second. Um, I will be asking you questions. I want someone, anyone, I don't care who you are, to please just blurt out the answer, but only make sure we're talking during that time. Uh, whoever it is that is subbing in my classroom right now, um, please feel free to pause this video at any moment um, should the kids need to watch it again. Uh, students, if you are off task, which I know you won't be, um, but just to put a little bit of fear into you, if that you are doing that, you will be watching this video again and again and again until you can make it through it silently. So first and foremost, let's dive on in to this thing called National History Day. Now you're probably wondering, what the heck is National History Day? Now, first and foremost, this slide you really don't have to worry about right now um, because I'm not in class, so you're probably not gonna be annoying me, but that doesn't mean you won't possibly be annoying someone. Now, what I'm only going to say on this one is the most important part of this is that thing about a question. If you have a question, please write that down somewhere and get that to me immediately so I can get it back to you as quick as humanly possible. Now, you're probably wondering, what the heck is this thing called National History Day? Now, what it is, is it's a historical research project that all students in this course must complete. So you've got to complete a historical research project. And I'm gonna explain a little bit about what this means, because I know when you're hearing this, there's some of you who are probably thinking like, oh my gosh, what am I about to get myself into? Uh, I will make sure I explain all that to you so you don't have to freak out and worry just yet, okay? Now, students get to choose to complete a research project. You get to choose what kind of project you're doing. There are five different examples you get to pick from. I'll explain these all in just a little bit, but they're gonna be a research paper, a museum exhibit, dramatic presentation, an interactive website. Don't know why I said interactive like that, or a documentary. Now, you're gonna compl choose to complete this project either as an individual, so if you wanna do this alone, you're certainly welcome to do that, or you get to choose to do this as a group. This is going to be up to you. However, if you choose to go the route of doing this as a group, there are a couple things that you need to note. Number one, the group agrees to accept the same grade on that entire project. So if you're gonna be a group of three, and groups can't be more than three, uh, and there's one person in your group who you know is not gonna do the work, um, and that's gonna hurt your grade, don't join a group with them, or get used to the fact that their inability to work is going to be impacting you. Additionally, me as a teacher, I have the right to veto, hello airplane, thank you for being loud and flying over my head right now, um, but I have the right to veto, which means say goodbye to any groups, sorry I cannot compete with the jet engine, uh, any group that is going to simply not work. I can step in and say, this ain't gonna work, find a new group to work with. However, I don't anticipate doing that, so make sure you're picking to work with people who you know that you can work with and get stuff done. First and foremost, you gotta pick a topic. It's really hard to do a research project when you don't know what you're doing your research project on. Now, your topic has to um, basically fit within these three categories. Number one, it has to be historically important. Do not talk about something that has no historical importance on a history research project. Simply put, that ain't gonna work. It's gonna be a really boring project um, for you to do is gonna be a really boring project for me to grade and you're not gonna get a very good grade on it. Uh, number two, you need to make sure that your topic relates to the theme. I'm gonna tell you that theme at the end, so just hold on to that question, which I'm sure you're gonna have. Uh, just hold on to that question. And you need to make sure that it's a topic that you have a genuine interest in. Now, this is where this is gonna get a little bit weird, just making sure you're still awake. Uh, I'm gonna ask a question, I'm gonna pause, and I want someone to yell out the answer to that question. Um, and if you don't, I will know that, and I will not be happy. So, nah, I won't be that unhappy, but make sure. Uh, please, please, please speak. Uh, answer this question. So why do you think it is important to pick a topic that you have an interest in? Uh, someone answer that question for me right now. 
Oh, yes, I love to hear those voices from far, far away. Um, yeah, pick a topic that you're interested in because if you pick a topic you're interested in, this project is going to turn out to be a lot better. Um, you're going to have a little bit more interest. It might actually turn out to be a little bit fun, hypothetically, possibly. Who knows? But make sure you have an interest in that topic. Uh, I will announce the due date for this project on Classroom. However, what I can tell you is this due date will be sometime in April. Next, step two, blow away a little slide. Okay, you need to narrow your topic down. Uh, if a topic is too broad, it's gonna make your life miserable. Um, if you're trying to just write about like the Industrial Revolution, that's huge. There is way, way too much information there. Narrow it down, make it simple. Just like when you're doing a science fair project, you don't look at like chemical reactions. You look at a specific chemical reaction. Do the same kind of thing with your National History Day top project. Okay, for example, the Pony Express is an interesting phenomenon that was innovative approach to the transcontinental mail service. Um, however, this topic is incredibly general. It's huge, it's broad, and it's going to be very hard for you to research. Narrow it down, make it a little bit more interesting. Blew that away. Number three, pick a category. Your category is one of these five different things. I'm going to explain each of these right here. A documentary, exhibit, paper, performance, and a website. Good. Now, if you're going to do a documentary, a documentary needs to reflect your ability to use audiovisual equipment to communicate your topic's significance. You need to know how to make a documentary. Um, it's going to help you develop skills in these different areas, and I'm taking this directly from the NHD website, which I'll tell you in just a little bit what that is. Um, but you're going to be using photographs, videos, audio, um, graphic presentations to create a documentary. Now, you're not going to just go and find something that National History or the History Channel made uh, and use two minutes of their clip in your documentary. Simply put, that's going to result in a zero on this project. Uh, you can use videos that others have used. However, you need to be the one doing the voiceover. You need to be the one explaining what's happening. Your presentation needs to include primary source materials. Remember, a primary source is a source that took place during the actual event, and it needs to be an original production. So you're not just going to borrow what someone else did and say, hey, I'm going to slap my name on this, and this is mine. That's called plagiarism. That results in a what is it? Yes, a zero, and that will not be pleasant. So please, please, please do not plagiarize your assignment. Uh, in case you didn't know this, um, make sure you know how to use the equipment uh, if you're going to be doing a documentary. If you've never used a computer in your life before, which I know all of you have, and you have no clue how to operate um, anything to make a, docu a documentary, uh, maybe don't do a documentary. might make your life just a little bit challenging. So I would recommend you don't do that. Um, for obvious reasons, okay? And it must not be more than 10 minutes in length. It could be less than 10 minutes. I wouldn't go more than 10 minutes, because uh, you can't. Uh, most people ask kind of, what's the minimum length it should be? I recommend if you wanna get a good grade on this, shoot for about eight and a half minutes minimum, um, closer to the 10 minutes versus less than 10 minutes. Uh, you theoretically could turn in a documentary that's two minutes long. I can tell you this, you're not gonna get a very good grade. Your project's gonna be pretty bad, and I recommend you don't do that. Okay, next is an exhibit. This is gonna be like the science fair kind of uh, trifold thing. It's gonna be visual representation of your research and your interpretation of the topic significance in history. It needs to be analysis and interpretation of your topic. It needs to be clear and evident to the viewer that you are analyzing your topic. So basically, why does this matter? And you're interpreting this topic with your own point of view. That is important. If the person who's looking at your exhibit cannot see that, that is going to be a problem. You need to use labels and captions creatively with your visual images um, to enhance the message of your exhibit. You're not just taking a trifold, printing out random pieces of paper, um, cutting them out in a really kind of haphazard fashion and just taping them um, on to a poster board. That's not how this is going to work. If you do that, you're not going to get a good grade. Now, there has to be a 500 word maximum, okay? No more than 500 words on your exhibit. You must also state there's this many words that I used on my exhibit. Um, if need be, I will go through and count this. Please don't make me do that because that does not sound like the fun way to spend an evening. But you never know. Uh, next one is a paper. Now your paper, this is like the traditional form of research, okay? You're gonna be doing a research paper. Uh, various types of creative writing can be used. If you wanna do like a diary as if you were someone living in the trenches of World War 
one and that's kind of how you're going to be doing your project you can do that be creative just make sure you talk to me in advance um, so that I can guide you and make sure you're actually doing this in the correct kind of way otherwise that's going to be problematic if you do the whole project and it's not quite what's within within the requirements um, it needs to be grammatically correct and it needs to be well written if you have a bunch of typos on this words that don't make sense run on sentences and you try turning that in they're not going to get a good grade so simply put don't do that your research paper needs to explain the importance of your topic why is this topic important if you can't tell me why your topic's important maybe you shouldn't pick that topic and it must be in apa format apa format i will show you how to do in class similar to mla just slightly different and it must be between 100 1500 words and 2500 words can it be any more answer that question no no it cannot can it be less no it cannot make sure it's between that word limit and you are going to be good to go I am not going to allow you to do a paper if you are in a group of more than two people. Why? Because if you do that, there's going to be one person who inevitably will not be doing enough work. Um, and it's not really fair to you that you're going to be doing all the work to give them a grade when they didn't really do anything. Um, so no more than two people when it comes to a paper. Next topic is a performance. This is if anyone is a little bit more theatrical, kind of like me. <laughs> Uh, yes, okay. A performance is a dramatic portrayal of your topic's significance in history, and it needs to be original. You're not going to take Shakespeare and say, we're going to talk about Julius Caesar and perform Shakespeare's play of Julius Caesar. That is not how this works. You will be writing a script, and then you will be theatrically performing your script. It needs to be scripted, as I already stated. It needs to have research, and you have to use your research in a dramatic uh, appeal, but not at the expense of historical information. It is historically accurate, and you are portraying this um, through drama. You are not, like, basing it loosely on what's going on, like a Lincoln Vampire Hunter. You're not doing that. Um, it needs to be historically accurate information, and it must not be more than 10 minutes in length. Lastly is a website, okay? A website is the most interactive of all NHD, National History Day categories. Uh, the website needs to reflect your ability to use website design and computer technology to communicate your topic's significance to history. You need to know how to make a website. Um, there are some websites out there. The NHD website actually has everything kind of pre-made for you to help you make this a little bit easier, but make sure you know what you are doing. Uh, the website needs to be a collection of different web pages interconnected by hyperlinks, um, both the primary and secondary sources with your analysis. So it's not just you pump a bunch of sources together, you need to explain to me why these sources matter. You need to engage the viewers. It needs to have a mix between like photos, um, videos, text, uh, images, anything like that, maps, music, um, it's not just a bunch of hyperlinks all thrown together. 1,200 word maximum on your website. Now, if you have any questions on any of those five different topics, want some more information, please go to the National History Day website, nhd.org. I will post that up on Google Classroom. That is going to be the easiest way to get information. That website has more than I can possibly tell you. If you ask me a question on this and I don't know, I'm going to direct you to the NHD website. Um, or I'll be looking at the NHD website myself, please go to nhd.org for any questions you might have over this project. Step four is doing your research. Your research, as with any project, is the largest phase of the project. I will give you deadlines throughout this project. Make sure you are following the research deadlines or we're gonna have some problems going on here. The, the research is not complete until you can completed a research checklist. I will pass out a research checklist and I will post that on the website as well so you can go through this, um, but make sure you are uh, going through the correct process. I'll talk a little bit more about that at a later date. Um, a bunch of different varieties for you uh, of re uh, resources for you to look at, um, but I recommend that you start with uh, secondary sources and the reason why is they're going to direct you to primary sources while you cannot use Wikipedia to actually cite um, on your project to actually use this information you simply could use Wikipedia to find the actual sources okay so if we're looking at Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier for example the first person of color to play in Major League Baseball in the United States uh, I'm gonna go to his Wikipedia page I'm gonna scroll to the bottom and there's gonna be a bunch of different links to primary 
and secondary sources that I can use. I'm going to click on some of those. Wikipedia is a really good place to find a bunch of information. Make sure your sources have historical context. Make sure they assist you in narrowing your topic down further. Uh, if you have a really broad topic like World War II, let's narrow it down a little bit. And again, as I stated, secondary sources guide you to the primary sources. Next, you need to use credible sources. Okay, written by credible experts in the field. Make sure they're historically accurate. If you doubt your website's credibility, ask. Okay? Um, if you uh, can do that. Another thing you can do is if you have information that you're not quite sure is actually accurate, double check and see if you can find that same information on another website. If you can't, it's probably not accurate information and you don't want to use it. But when in doubt, ask me, ask someone else, an adult, anyone else in the room, um, and they'll be able to help you and get you going on that. Always complete a website evaluation before using your website, which means to look at who wrote it, okay? So is there an author mentioned? If there's not an author mentioned, think maybe, why is that? There might be a problem with this website. You're not gonna have an author mentioned. Is it published? If it's not published, like it's a blog, please do not use it for historically accurate website information. Is the site maintained or does it look like it was made in 1997? Uh, if that was the case, you probably don't wanna use this. Um, is it copyrighted? Okay, copyrighted material tends to be very, very good because people can use it to make money. They don't want someone else stealing it because they've done a lot of work on it. So use copyrighted material. You see the little C or the R um, or the TM on the bottom of your page. Page. What's the purpose of the site? Okay, is it factual information or is it opinion based? And it is easy to navigate. Websites that are easy to navigate tend to be much more credible. Uh, number five, you'll create an annotated bibliography. You're going to do this to track and categorize your entire research. Um, you're going to do this as you begin your research. I will give you some more information on how to do an annotated bibliography. I'm going to check your annotated bibliography periodically, and each source needs to be cited correctly in APA format and with an annotation. If you have questions on an annotated bibliography, I will take uh, give you more of information on this at a later date. For now, do not worry about it, okay? I'm gonna create this in Google Sheet, I'll get it to you. Your citations are going to be uh, just like this one. I'm gonna skip through this slide right through now. We will come back to this at a later date, so don't worry about it right now. Okay, uh, one thing I would recommend all of you do if you have not done this yet is on Google Docs, okay? Uh, if you go to Google Docs and you click add-ons and then you're going to go over here to get add-ons, uh, you're going to get this thing right here called Easy Bib Creator. Uh, click this, click get add-on, click uh, where that little plus that says free, you're going to get it and you're going to have Easy Bib automatically hooked up to your Google Doc, making your life easier. Uh, anything you need for an annotated bibliography is going to be right through here, so you can see this. Um, I will again post this up on Classroom, it's already up on the website um, when you're doing your annotated bibliography. Again, don't worry about that for today, just giving you some background on the project. Um, remember, secondary sources or primary source, look at this different stuff. Make sure you understand why your source is important. Number six is the process paper. This is going to be done at the end, 500 words or fewer. You're going to include basically what you picked, why you picked your, to picked your topic this way, why you're conducting your research in this manner, um, and what category you picked and why, and then how your project relates to the NHD theme. This is done at the total end of the project, so you'll be doing this some point in April. I'll get you more information on this at a later date as well. Number seven is your final submission. This due date will obviously be changed. I will post that on Google Classroom as soon as I have, have a final date in mind. Um, I know that it will be about the second week in April though, so make sure that you are staying up to date on this one. Uh, this is when you're going to submit everything together at this time. Um, everything. Okay. Lastly, your topic. Your topic is going to be breaking barriers in history. Meaning, I'm going to go back to the slide right here. Uh, you're going to be talking about someone who or something that has broken a barrier. Now, this can be a physical barrier like a wall or someone comes crashing through it and changing history. It can be a um, kind of metaphorical barrier, like Jackie Robinson was the first person of color to play in Major League Baseball. Therefore, he's kind of breaking the color barrier coming through and doing this. It can be like the first woman elected to somewhere, this woman breaking the barrier right through there. You're going to be creating a, talk, doing a project on breaking barriers in history. If you have any questions on this, please, please, please get a hold of me. Uh, contact me with any questions you might have. I've posted a video up on Google Classroom explaining what you should be doing next. Um, please get with uh, up your groups up to uh, three other people, or so sorry, a total of three up to two other people. Um, if someone is gone and you would like to use them in your group and they want to work with you and you know that, um, just make sure you write that down. 
Uh, everything else you're supposed to be doing is posted up on Google Classroom. Questions, email me. Otherwise, good luck.